Hey guys, Brian with Vest Source checking in today. We've got us another windy, somewhat mild day here in Southeast Texas. We're starting to get some of that humidity creeping in. So we're kind of getting closer to our summer weather. In fact, I think we got mid eighties going, but we got another nice day to uh, work on cars without broiling ourselves to death. So I'm gonna get back on our Orange Flame 76 Corvette. Uh, you guys have seen a few of my previous videos. I had uh, one video where I detailed um, the changing the luggage rack and a couple other videos I've done on this car highlighting the vehicle itself uh, oh yeah changing the brakes that's what I did we changed the brakes uh, on the rear caliper on one video but this is really just a, a very decent car low mileage car that's original has never been restored so I really don't mess with it too much uh, I did notice I drove it around quite a bit over the winter this was kind of my winter beater I jokingly referred to it as um, and uh, notice that of course our rear shocks were blown out on this car and that's a normal occurrence you know we're talking again 42 years old so you're gonna have to start keeping up with a few things on cars but again as I advocate or I and don't know if I've advocated a lot but I'm a big pusher for buying an older car and, and tinkering with it because you're gonna spend a lot more less money in maintenance and more money in financing a car with full coverage insurance and all the accessories and everything else and truth is once you learn how to work on your own car if you can work on your own car you're in a whole lot better shape so today what I'm gonna do is because I noticed our shocks were bad I went ahead and picked up a pair of uh, rear shocks uh, some KYB gas adjust shocks uh, for Corvettes the good thing is these are actually really easy to change on the Corvette one of the few um, lower suspension items that won't just make you pull your hair out on these C3 cars um, they've literally got just two through bolts on them uh, one on each side and as long as they're not seized up which I doubt they will be on my car uh, we should be in good shape so uh, basic tools are required for this not real heavy duty uh, of course a little penetrating fluid in case uh, our impact and of course our our water because it is hot enough to keep us in some fluids so I'm gonna go ahead and grab uh, my impact in the uh, jack get this rear tire off real quick again and then I'll show you guys where the old uh, shocks are installed and I'll show you what it takes to get them off there hang tight I'll be right back okay I'm back here and as you can see you've actually got pretty good access to this uh, shock right here here's your upper mount right here come around to the back side that's an 18 millimeter uh, bolt that holds that in the back nut and then uh, uh, not 18 millimeter I'm sorry three quarter and uh, 5 8 on the front on the bottom you've got a uh, 7 8 that holds that lower mount in so basically all that amounts to is you take those two out of there and this whole thing will come right out so now these you can see they've been in here for a long time um, actually metal housing but they're old you know the bushing actually looks pretty good but probably at least 15 years old and they're not supposed to have that gap in the middle there like they do so we'll change these out and see if this girl will ride a little bit better for us down the road um, and you can kind of see maybe I've never detailed before here is that independent rear suspension on Corvettes uh, the half shaft the center, the center differential where your ring and pinion is kept and it's actually got a, a half shaft this spins while the car is in motion uh, that's part of that IRS rear end that Corvettes were kind of famous and still are famous for they've had this since 1963 your trailing arm assembly here these can be kind of a booger uh, that nut right there is where the uh, trailing arm gets held into the frame pocket and if there's a lot of corrosion or stuff these are where the, the Corvettes will actually rust really really bad right here uh, from water intrusion or just water coming down or being kept in a bad environment you see there's a little surface rust on this but no corrosive nature this is actually a cotter pin that holds the shims in so you've got to shim this to correct your uh, uh, caster camber on the car uh, or the, the way the wheels track and with the rest of it so this is a more advanced kind of thing behind that plate there that's actually a body mount for the car that's the number three body mount there's a number four body mount so when you see guys refer to frame off restorations or body off restorations I hate that frame off because you don't take the frame off you take the body off the frame but anyway that's your number four body mount right there uh, and then there's your number three right there and of course that number four it's not horrible but I don't like that see how it's coming apart there so eventually I'll probably do a video on taking this thing apart and replacing it it makes the car ride just a little bit smoother 
This is actually your fuel line running from the front to the back of the car. Just right there on top of the frame rail, so it's kind of fun. Anyway, let me uh, get these bolts off here real quick. I'll be right back and I'll show you guys once it's off of there how everything just hangs here. Be back in a sec. All right, so now we've got our lower mount bolt off of there. If I can find the location I'm trying to film here. Right there, sorry. There are our bolts off there. Our upper bolt's loose from the back side. What I'm going to do here just for fun, spray a little bit of uh, PBT blaster in here. This is some really good stuff. Helps kind of loosen things up a bit to get the metal on metal pieces out when they've been on for a while. And then here, we're just going to pull a little bit like this. I should have gotten my bigger screwdriver probably. And what we can also do as a way to ease this thing out is if we keep spinning here. Let's see if I can get this right. Here. It will actually break it free. Right there. Oh, and somehow, sorry guys. Somehow I went to close-up view. So since we're not looking for close-up view, we'll get that there. So as you can see, uh, it's gonna be a little difficult for me. It doesn't want to come out immediately. But I've also got another trick that's gonna require probably two hands. Let's see. I'm gonna get one of my smaller wrenches here. It's an old mechanics trick. You can pry right here. And no, that one doesn't want to come out. So give me just a second to coax this bolt out of this top mount. I'm gonna get this rear, this old shock out. I'll show you guys what it looks like. Hang on just a second. Okay, I'm back. As you can see, we've got the uh, old shock off. We had to use a little bit of our Punisher. There's what I affectionately refer to that one as, because the lower mounts would get a little bit grody, kind of seized up, but not too bad in this shape. You can see where this shock was pretty much uh, nasty and blown out. This is a, what is this? What brand is this? This is our road sensing something or other, maybe Monroe. It's a cheapie though, you can see. It's stuck in one position, it won't go anywhere. So, yeah, it was not any fun to drive it with that thing bouncing around like a mamba, mamba, mamba machine in the back, like a buckboard, you know? So, got the new one here. Let's go ahead and we'll put this one on. Nice thing about these is we can go ahead and uh, put these in the lower mount and slide that on there like so and then we'll let it come up into position there. Actually what I'm probably going to do is jack the, the trailing arm up. See if I can do this while I got the camera running here. Hang on just a second. I'm going to lower my jack down just a bit. Always be careful with these guys. It's one of my big pet peeves. Um, it doesn't happen often, but people do still get crushed under their cars or mains because they don't bother to follow safety protocols. And of course, I'm doing this on an incline, which means I always keep a block of wood at the front, both tires, keep it from moving. So what I'm gonna do here, see how I'm jacking up? And it's jacking up the trailing arm itself which you've got, that's how you got that movement and that independent rear suspension. So that's where that movement comes from. So let's see if I can get this positioned correctly. In here, let's get into that. Come in just a little bit more there. Get past that sleeve. There we go, perfect. Okay, we're gonna get in here. forward a little bit and we're just about there let's see if our bolt will go through and there it is all right we're in there it's my trusty hammer knock that the rest of the way in and there you go guys pretty much all it takes now I just got to put those lower 
mount bolts back on there on the upper one and release the uh, little strap that's on that thing and I am ready to rock and roll. So let me get my bolts ready, my hardware. I'll be back in a second. I'll show you what my finished product looks like. We'll cut that and you can see how it uh, keeps attention on this assembly. So I will be right back. Oh, well, I didn't account for the fact that the trailing arm was going to come down, so it just removed my strap for me. So, we'll forget about that part of the video. It's called errors in judgment, no matter how long you've been working on cars. So, uh, give me a second to get my mat nut, the, the mounts back on here, guys, and I'll show you what this thing looks like once we're done. Alright, we got this bad boy in here, and uh, not too difficult, not too shabby. Two bolts, one through the top, one keeper bolt on the bottom, and she's in and ready to go. So, you know, as I was talking before, this is probably one of the easiest things to do on the rear end of a, a, an independent rear suspension IRS Corvette, um, at least from the older cars. You know, if you've seen other my other videos, I actually did a video on a how-to on C5 uh, Corvette suspensions and what they're constructed of. And I'll link that above my head right there. You can see it. Um, but the Corvettes from this era, everything on them is steel. Okay, the trailing arms, the half shafts, the differential, the spring even is a steel spring with just plastic liners between the leafs. So these can rust in a rusty environment or if you keep them in the dirt and things like this. This car, some chucklehead decided they'd go ahead and paint the frame over the dirt. Uh, which, eh, not my favorite thing for them to do, but whatever. Kept it, kept it kind of somewhat uh, protected. But again, down here, unless you just park your cars in the backyard and let them sink into the mud down in southeast Texas, um, the moisture doesn't really get to them. So they'll stay fairly clean. And I've kept this car outside for several years now, just parked on a concrete service, uh, just because I don't have room. I've got my other cars in the garage. Uh, right now, but um, you can see it doesn't do it any harm and it's just a driver car It's not a body off restored or anything like that So I'm gonna put this wheel back on and I'll show you guys maybe the difference in the ride height between one side and the other So uh, let me get that wheel back on. I'll be right back All right, so the wheels back on and you can see here I've got a little over four fingers of width. I can get through that fender well there and then we come over here to our other side with our, our bad shock still on the driver's side. And you can see I can barely get, I get a little over three in there. So you can tell that when these shocks get blown out, they will affect not only the ride quality, but the ride height of a Corvette. And with a Corvette especially, you don't want to get it too low uh, because what will happen is I've got tires that are a little bit oversized for this car. I've got 245s running it, uh, but you can see they come out just a tiny bit. And in here is, let's see if I can get an angle of it. There's a lip right here that runs all the way through here. And if you're bouncing around on a bumpy road and you got bad shocks, that tire is gonna hit the lip. And it's not a big thing, but it damages that inner fender liner right there. So it's something you don't want to have happen on your Corvette, because then it's a pain in the butt to repair, because you're talking fiberglass repair. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this other side on real quick, and I'm going to show you guys what it looks like when I'm done. I won't go through the whole process uh, since I showed you on this side, but I'll show you what our ride height looks like after I'm finished. So give me a few minutes to wrap things up, get this other side done, and I'll talk to you in just a second. All right, I'm back with a look at our finished product here. Uh, we've got our left side shock absorber in and installed. And you can see here, now I can actually fit four fingers through here quite easily. And back to our other side, we'll see if we've got any noticeable difference. Sometimes the Corvettes with a worn spring will sometimes have a little bit of difference, but it looks like eh, just a touch touch more gap over here but that will probably settle once the rear end is back down because what happens is when you jack up a corvette in the back the wheels tend to hang down at an odd angle until you drive them and put them under load so that's going to wrap it up for me today 
uh, you know, nothing too complicated. I just want to show you guys on these Corvettes at least. Rear shock absorbers are not a stressful endeavor. I might take a little video of driving this car around later, kind of road test it and see how it feels. Um, but again, I appreciate everybody tuning in and watching and sticking around to the end if you're so inclined. Uh, just kind of enjoy showing the things I've done on these cars and how to maintain them and have a little, have a little, how, to, little how to have a little fun. There's a tongue twister there while you're doing it. So uh, make sure you check me out, comment if you like, like the, the hit the like button or subscribe button if you want to see some more of the things I do. That way you'll get notified every time I throw another video on YouTube showing my odyssey here with my Corvettes and other cars that I like to uh, hang around with. Here's our Formula 350 that I haven't detailed lately. I'll probably do a little work on this one in the next couple weeks along with that seat track assembly we talked about in the truck. So uh, again, I'll catch up with you all next time and look forward to seeing you then. Thanks guys.